Okay, I'm experimenting with the format here a little bit. If you want certain information, just look down the bottom of the screen here. You'll see the chapters. You can jump straight to what you need to know. It's a kind of a vlog style how to draw. Always a problem, catch a snake. Got to find a place to release it. I'm going to have to walk around and see if I can find a place where humans are just not there. And unfortunately, there seems to be bike trails everywhere. So I can get far enough off a bike trail, find good habitat to release the snake in a conservation area, it should be cool. Well that's a good sign of a place to release a tiger snake. Yeah. Hello. So we've walked a fair way in. This looks like a track that the push bike riders aren't using. And I can hear frogs. That blonk blonk is uh, a banjo frog. It's uh, nice food for any sort of snake. I think this could be a good place to release the tiger snake. Just go for a walk up here a bit further. So we've got beautiful ferns here, but also got lots of fallen logs, which is a home for the snake. We've got water for it to drink, we've got food for it, we've got sunshine, there's everything. This is a snaketopia. Snakes will love this. So I'm going to release this snake here. The, re the reason I'm releasing this snake, well, to start with, I catch a lot of snakes during the year, and usually I don't want to keep them, I want to move them on. This one, I caught at the end of last summer and had her over winter and she's not happy. I can tell when a snake's happy and she's not happy. She doesn't like being in captivity. And so for her own mental health, I think it's easier for her to live out here in Snaketopia. So the way I could tell that she wasn't happy is that every time I would uh, go near the enclosure, she'd run and hide. She doesn't want to eat anything. Her tongue flickers in and out really fast. And that usually means either fear or excitement. The snakes that are happy just lounge around and they just flicker the tongue out very slowly. So that's one of the ways you can tell a happy snake from an unhappy snake. Plus she also hoods out, gets upset. So, Let's get her out of the bag and see what sort of mood she's in today. There she is. Oops, see she's hooding out. And the tongue's flickering fairly fast. Not too aggressive. And she's kind of cold. So she probably needs to warm up a bit. Look at that lovely, lovely hooding. She's got a bit of a nick in her side there. So at some stage, something has had a go at her. Ooh, there she goes. Let's go and try and sketch her first. Okay. I don't even want to stop and sketch her. I just want to let her go. Oh, she's going to have a go at me. You know, that's why I let her go, she didn't bite my leg. There she goes, down there, under an old log. And uh, she left me with a little present. That's what snake poo looks like.
Okay, so this is a skin of a tiger snake. When they cast their skin, shed their skin off, they turn it inside out like a tight stocking or a sock. So I'm going to cut this along the back. Open this up. And here we have the belly scales. So if we look here, what we see is they just sort of fit neatly with the other scales. If we, if we were drawing a snake, or let's say we'll go like this. You've got your brick pattern here. You got your little zigzag line going like this. And you notice I'm doing a little bit of foreshortening there as well. So you can see you could just extend this out, or I might what I might do is make special scales, especially for the belly scales. So so the snake's coming up this way a bit. And I'm doing the... Whoops, no, I did that wrong. <laughs> Going in the middle of these. Right, let's get that right. Like that. Middle, 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 middle. So it's sort of a continuation of the brickwork, really. And so now that scale is in there like that. Now, that's pretty simple. But this is going to be a bit of an advanced class here. Let's uh, do something a little bit tricky. Let's say you want to draw an eastern brown. An eastern brown snake. There he is. A bit of a cartoony bit here. Mouth open. Oh, it's not too cartoony. The interesting thing is with the eastern brown is that they S like this. And here's where a bit of advanced belly scale drawing might come in handy. Because what you're going to get here is the scales are going to fan out like that. And here go like that. So see how they are fanning out in this direction here and here they're fanning out in this direction. They overlap so these scales here I won't be able to see this because it's all dry but if it wasn't all dry you can probably see a little bit here. You can see the little gap between those scales See that little gap? A little bit of skin. So they can stretch out, but they can overlap like that. That's how these snake scales work. So here on the inner, they're actually overlapping. And on the inner bit here, they're overlapping. And if you draw those scales first, and then you a bit of a bump on them, like that. Now when it comes to drawing your brickwork here, and of course there's going to be a little bit of a... What's happening here is it's going in, because you're seeing more of the scale, so you're seeing less of the back. You're seeing more of the belly scale, sorry, you're seeing less of the back. can almost just draw in the, the scale there between the two. 
So between this and this, you've got the scale. Then you can start back on your brickwork, but because of foreshortening, these bricks here are getting really narrow. But we're going to bring it out here. So this is where the advanced scale drawing comes into place. Let's make those belly scales here. See these belly scales are also being foreshortened. They're getting narrower. Just draw in between each scale, another scale. It can be rounded to start with because you can refashion that. You just need a guide. These scales are overlapping because they're on the inner. So you judge the thickness there. You see I'm drawing here, it just goes into almost nothing. Back to the brickwork. And then you can shape each one of those. Now one thing you gotta watch out for, if you're in Australia and you see a snake do this, I'll put some spots on him because he's like a Eastern Brown or Western Brown. So any of the brown snakes do this. It's time to practice social distancing. Yeah. Because when they est like that, it means they're going to strike. Now, it's just one more thing I'll say before I go off the subject here of um, scales. Uh, you see some tiger snakes, you see it in cobras. See how they will flatten or hood like this okay so the scales see those belly scales there two things I'll say about this so tiger snakes do this too what you can do there is space the scales out a bit so there's a gap between here too. So the brickwork is still there but around is a lot of gap until it comes back to being normal again and on this side here you would see a gap. Now when a snake hoods out like this, it's usually in a leopard or a cobra of some sort, if you was to take a cross section through there, poor snakey, what you'd see is this. Okay, so the vertebrae, the ribs which are normally like this, have been pushed out like this. And you have the belly muscles stomach muscles and you have a bit like this where the ribs are and so what it appears to be here is that and you'll see this with cobras and with tiger snakes is you might have the belly scales going like that this shape is like this So you might, let's say there's a light source coming here, you get a shadow there, you get a shadow there. I hope that made that clear. You got this little indentation here, so that might be a little bit of a shadow there. So there are some handy hints on how to draw belly scales. In the sun for a long time, fully exposed the other one still hardening slowly changing color now